Hey, Craig. Remember, so you don't have. I watched it. But at the time it came out, everyone I knew had I watched this movie. Action, which was meh. At some point in two thousand ten again. Had the same reaction they did to the original E. B. White story or nineteen seventy three cartoon. Now most of us see the original movie as a classic, but we're gonna be totally honest, the cartoon is a little corny. Sue what do you see? The greatest hog in history. Maybe a little bit corny. But it's corny in a way that's simple and gentle. It isn't trying to give you an emotional powerhouse, it's trying to give you a small story that slowly sneaks in its emotional moments without you even realizing it, similar to the book. The movie really doesn't do that. It's all too aware this is a beloved children's classic, so it tries way too hard to give you a beloved children's classic, as opposed to just giving you a good story. But it's got a decent heart, doesn't play too much to what kids found popular at the time, and who knows, maybe kids did connect with Emotional storytelling is, well, kids are constantly emotional. Either way, I'm going to go back and see if this film captures any of the charm of the original story, or if it's just overpriced and sausage. Almost 20 years later, let's take a look back at... The Adorable Charlotte's Web. As the credits roll, taken from the illustrations of the book, we get a narration from Sam Shepard. There was nothing special about Somerset County. It was a deeply ordinary place. Hence why my enthusiasm is at Costner levels. <laughs> it's about a spring when everything became different. A little girl did something. Something that would change everything. She survived the cat in the hat. There's not all for that, you know. And Miss Dakota Fanning is a farm girl named Fern. She witnesses the birth of a litter of pigs. And I witnessed the execution of one, too. What are you doing? I'll go back to bed. There's a carrot, are you? Well, let me tell you where most of the meat and chicken and nuggets comes from. No, not fair. Can't help being born small. Five being born small, you killed me. How'd you know your mother and I have that talk? Oh, oh my. Oh my God. Fern says she'll take care of the pigs. I think we can go and edit up. Not sure it's meant to be funny or not. Absolutely will not let you kill us. Well, she lost that argument. She found out how delicious Wilbur was. She asked if their baby calf could be next. Fern was up before dawn, ridding the world of injustice. She does end up calling the pig Wilbur, and this is where Fanning's grown up acting works against the film. See, she's supposed to like the pig so much she sneaks him into school. So we can see Xavier doesn't know any better doing that, but when the kid acts and talks like this. Five newborn small, you've killed me. There's no difference between you being so heartless. Unfair and unjust. You really want to see that same kid doing this and thinking she'd get away with it. Now she was playing Coraline. She might brag about having her future science experience. Fern, what's going on? Oh my! Too much <laughs> the girl also starts to get too big, so it's given to her uncle, who owns a farm across the street. Pigs are smart. Pigs are not smart. Apparently, they're as intelligent as dolphins. Advantage, dolphin. Okay, so in a way, the casting in this is really good. Even Fanning, with a little better direction, I feel like could have pulled this off fine. She's played similar parts before. But it's a strange problem with the movie. The casting's almost too good. There's people like Kathy Bates, Thomas St. Church, John Cleese, Robert Redford, all these powerhouse actors perfectly chosen for Charlotte's Web, except it's Nickelodeon Charlotte's Web. Which means it's got to try really hard to be funny at times. And when it wants to be funny, it's very disjointed, overscored, and immature, which honestly is fine for a lot of Nickelodeon productions. But for a story this good and a cast this good, it comes across as pretty awkward. Or that might be, they do have to work around the animal's movement, so it looks like they're reacting to what's going on, and yeah, I'm sure that's hard to do on what I'm sure was a tight shoot, so there's a lot of heavy editing whenever they talk, which makes it tricky for us to get into the moment, because there's always an edit every few seconds. You grow hair. <gasps> <gasps> you grow hair! Good morning! Is that your contribution to society? So while most of the casting is pretty good, Cedric the Entertainer as a goose is really weird. Hey kids, what's going on over here? You need something snappy, like Pig Supreme. Oprah Winfrey plays the other goose, and she's fine, but 
everybody has a farm type voice. Even John Cleese, you could sort of connect to an old British farm, though what the hell is an English sheep doing in Maine? And Cedric the Entertainer just doesn't match that at all. It'd be like having Maggie Smith on In Living Color. Some things just don't go. Well, that might have been helped because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> oh, wait, we did that joke in too little. And we all knew that. Bill pulled it off great. I think I'd better stay here. Mark's gonna be back soon anyway. It's also interesting that they keep the same young voice for Wilbur throughout the film, even though he is supposed to grow up a bit. But hey, it does make sense kids would relate to a character that sounds more like them than, well, Henry Gibson. And B, Babe. Big hit. Big, big hit. Oh, we want something that's like that big hit. Hi there. Well, the film isn't all bad, though, so if you ever take moments to slow down and let us know some of these animals. Maybe we should be placed Templeton. Again, pretty ideal casting. And while the CG most of the time doesn't look like he's really there, he moves like he's really there. Getting down to believable, which is a rat usually has, while not distracting from what he's saying. Surprisingly, if anything, it plays more into it. Your information, Bane. We were here long before your time, and we'll be here long after. We character actors practically built the entertainment industry. I'm expecting you to finish your homework and go straight to bed. But, Mom, I always tell him good night. He spent so much money keying us from day to night and dumping in that good night line. It'd be a shame to let it go to waste. <laughs> Calms him down, saying if he goes to sleep, she'll show who she is in the morning. This, of course, is a spider named Charlotte, and... <laughs> well, still want to chat? By God, they're trying. <laughs> okay, so it's clear you can't go the human face route like in the cartoon, because that'd be even more creepy. So either you gotta shoot this thing from a distance, like let the voice work do all the heavy lifting, or you have to give an amazing design I'll win everybody over. Yes, the animals say she's ugly, but they're trying to make her look cute. And, yeah, it's hard to make a spider look cute. Even that Lucas the spider was originally designed to be cute and make people less afraid of spiders, still pretty damn disturbing. Lucas is nowhere near the creepiest spider anyone's seen. It reminds me of that Simpsons where Homer suddenly wants to keep a lobster as a pet because he sees him as cute while no one else does. I feel like this is what the filmmakers saw and this is what half the audience saw. It's a value to death, but I don't any kids bought any dress up spider dolls after this. You have all your meals brought to you in a pail. I don't get that kind of royal treatment. Also, if you watch my channel, you know I'm not the biggest Julia Roberts fan, and I think kicking her shows even more how too self aware this film might have been. Choosing who everybody called America's sweetheart at the time to play the role. Similar to how Tom Hanks plays Mr. Rogers or Japan or Walt Disney to a point where it's kind of distracting. But I have seen her good and stuff, even in voice acting. And this is... unoffendable. And have my beauty steal the show. Now go on and show them what a radiant pig can do. <laughs> Much like Mary Poppins, you need someone that can have a simple woman demeanor that kids can connect to, but an elegant yet firm directness that shows she knows how the world works and can be very wise. It's to hear that sounds, and yes, Debbie Reynolds nails it in the Century Three version. Roberts tries and sometimes gets it down, but she's more like a nice neighbor than eloquent wife. I think now is the time for me to say salutations. I don't for a minute believe she would ever say that. And when you hear her introduce that word to most of us and make it sound convincing, that's a huge problem. But she does have more interest than our dear narrator. There's an old expression that says that ignorance is bliss. And I'm inclined to believe it's true. Like when I asked the director, how am I doing? And he said, fantastic, lots of personality. <laughs> I pass this as the goose hatches her eggs, but one of them goes wrong. So Templeton takes it. Exactly. Okay, I know this is a really stupid thing to focus on, but excellent makes a lot more sense. Nobody will look at that situation and say exactly. They say excellent. It's not funny either way, and unless you're Vincent Price, they make it funny, but you can be consistent. <laughs> this joke's much better when it's you. He's got a big day coming to him next Christmas. They're saving him for Christmas. What's Christmas? The day you'll be cured. Now that's a mean spirited pun to write. Typical rat. Ah, you gonna lie to the future football here? Even in a lesser version, Templeton's still the best. Charlotte says she'll find a way to save him the same way he saved her from Fern's brother. So she weaves a web blowing the farmers away. <laughs> Prefer the 
to where Charlotte has a real sick sense of humor. What? <laughs> In the wizard. I don't know. Maybe an animal said something to me and I didn't hear it because I wasn't paying attention. Cute, but seriously, Ritalin. Ritalin is saying it's some kind of miracle, but. The web. The web itself is a miracle. I'm starting to question your degree as a doctor in. Whimsy? There's a school for that? They sent Templeton out to find more work Charlotte can put on her web. Two crows played by Thomas Ian Church and. How is there's a person out there with that name doing a pretty pointless but pretty funny routine about always seeing the same guy in every field? How can he be in every courtroom? He is following us. I hate that guy. Unless a spider writes something nice about this head, in which case I find him amazing. Five more words, and Charlotte again spins her web, turning the farmer to enter Wilbur in the town's fair. At least Charlotte won't be going with him. I'm just not up to traveling at the moment. Why not? I'm expecting. They made Wilbur and Buttermilk. I had this dream. That ain't right. That ain't right. But once again, Charlotte hears Wilbur can still be in an IHOP's menu, so she tags along to help him out, bringing Templeton with her. Have you heard that good things come to those who wait? You know, good things come to those who find it and shove it in their mouth. Is nobody else hearing this? Her indignant boy, she likes from her class, and he seemed to hit it off. Are you up there? Oh, uh, see. Look at the fire. Look at the fire. Look at the fire. Look This is surprising for a number of reasons. I don't know what this is, but I love it here. <laughs> Typical stick-fair food. Evelyn finds more words for Charlotte. You know, besides this salutation, she sure is limited in her vocabulary. Again, weaves are met. However, it looks like the pig next to them already won the blue ribbon. Yeah. Look at the bright side, sweetie. Remember that bone china tea set you always wanted? What? But it turns out the judges saw the web last night, so they can gather a special presentation to award Wilbur an even bigger honor. This handsome medal. A token. We're giving it to a pig. <laughs> This is my magnum opus. What's a magnet opus? Ah, look, kid, I'm dying. Can you give me one moment to cry of idiocy? You did it all. My webs were no miracle. I was only describing what I saw. Her stolen word. This really is the web. He <laughs> doesn't know what to do, so he asked Templeton to bring Charlotte's egg. Thank you, Templeton. For everything. I never know what to make of him nodding to her. Like, I get it, he sees she's dying and it finally gets to him, but I would have liked it more if he either didn't know how to feel or if he just gave a nod so fast it could have been mistaken for a twitch. The slow-mo just seems like a little much. I mean, this dude was literally about to let hundreds of babies die unless Wilbur bribed him. Who got his hind quarters pecked to make you radiant, huh? You make me repeat dibs on my slot for the rest of my life. Done. Happy now, asshole! With you people. Don't worry, Charlotte. They'll come out in a day or two. She passes away, and Wilbur finds himself back at home, swearing to look after the eggs. When they finally hatch, though, they literally take off. Please don't go. Wait, wait. Nice. Obviously, just 
always saying it for all the time he spent raising them. Why don't you keep in touch, Jacqueline and Buster, in the other room? He likes to stay. We like it here. However, three babies stay behind. What are your names? We don't know. We're minutes old. Not too bright, is he? We're gonna die if he raises us. I'm already coping with that. All because someone already cope. The grace and beauty and nobility of the humblest creature. Little girl, I mentioned in the beginning. Oh, wait, I mean the spider. Wait, wait. I don't go back and forth on who's the lone hero here. And we're all here because we're determined for the girl. We did it all. Okay, who's the who is the hero of the movie? Is is it the little girl or is it Spider? Because they kind of said it was the girl, but now they're saying that Spider was the char main character. Maybe we should have said it was a collective effort, but we didn't. We started off saying it was a kid, but then ended by saying it was the spider. The kid doesn't even show up for the ending. Oh well, again, not cat in the hat, and we can all thank Jesus for that. <laughs> animals and working with producers that no doubt wanted a good kids movie but also clearly wanted to make money must have been miserable. So if you were told this is based on one of the great children's books, you'd know something was a little lost in translation. However, as I mentioned earlier, it might not be as lost on kids who grew up with it. I could see children watching this and finding it good enough that it introduces them to the book. But it certainly has good intentions and enough of an understanding of what makes the story so memorable. It's not the masterpiece the film deserves to be. But it's I only made a sequel to the animated one.